بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to have this session for some of us it is the day of 15th of Sha'aban for some people maybe it's the night after we are very blessed to live in a time that everything reminds us of Imam Mahdi as soon as we enter the months of Sha'aban we have a special affinity to Imam Zaman and then when we approach middle of Sha'aban it gets more and more I hope throughout the year we would always be mindful of Imam Zaman and would be praying for him and would be reflecting on our responsibilities towards him I would like to share with you a few points and then inshallah if we have chance we can have some questions and then inshallah we would end with recitation of Ziyarat al Yasin, which is recommended by Imam Mahdi himself I am not giving to a comprehensive talk on Imam Mahdi. First of all, it's not possible. Plus, uh, we have talked about this in different um, you know, places and on different occasions. I want to share some of the uh, new things that I am thinking about or some of the new things that I have come across. Uh, one point is a reflection on the role of Imam Mahdi Sharif in the time of Ghaybah, in the time of occultation. For us to understand this is not very easy because we know more about all the hujaj of Allah whether it be before Islam or after Islam who were in the time of Zuhur, in the time of being publicly functioning we know what for example Prophet Nuh did what Prophet Musa did what Prophet Isa did what Prophet Muhammad did what Imam Ali did, all things that we know, all our experiences are 99% 0.99 about Zuhur. There have been some very limited periods in which even in the past there were some kind of ghaiba. For example, when Musa السلام, went for 30 days and then it was extended for another 10 days uh, to receive the tablets Allah. that was a kind of ghayba. but that was very limited and plus he had Harun السلام, in his place so it's very limited in the time of uh, for example uh, our Imams also we have few occasions that are considered in, in considering some of this like a kind of ghaybah when the hujj of Allah is not able to function but 
we were 99 maybe 99 of our experience and information is about the time of Zuhur. So for us, it's difficult to understand what to expect from Imam Zaman in the time of Ghaiba and what not to expect. Sometimes we think that either Imam has no role, so we go to one extreme and we think that uh, his role is only a starting after Allah gives him permission to publicly declare his movement. Some people go to the other side of the extreme and they think they can expect Imam Zaman to do everything. He should do everything for us. He should fix all our problems, personal problems, family problems, community problems. And if they see that some problems still remain, despite them asking and praying, sometimes they are disheartened, sometimes they are disappointed. To understand the correct position, the balanced position is very important. Some of you may remember when we were in uh, Montreal, uh, we had this discussion that I said in a discussion about Imam Mahdi and Jesus, which was around Christmas time. And later also I mentioned this in uh, Hojat Academy courses in Istanbul. That Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif has his role as the Hujja of Allah. There is no doubt about it. So he is the channel of mercy and grace and favor of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to creation and in particular to the inhabitants of the earth. It is true even in the time of Ghaiba. Because of him, people are receiving sustenance. It's true even in the time of Ghaiba. Because of him, earth and sky are intact and stable. It's true in the time of Ghaiba as well. So, these roles are there. His role as guide, his role as witness, as shaheed or shahid are also there. We have discussed this in Imama and Walaya series. What is limited in the time of Qayba is his leadership, is his direct involvement in our affairs. This is limited. We can benefit from his guidance and apply. Please listen very carefully. If there is something in my life, if there is something in my work, my tabliq, community affairs that I don't know, I can ask Allah for guidance, I can ask Hujja of Allah for guidance and receive this guidance and apply. This is there. And it's a very important part of the benefits that we can receive in the time of Ghaiba. That you can always be sure that there is a source of guidance for you. Imam is a hadi, is a guide who receives his guidance directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَمَنْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ أَحَقْوًا يُتَّبَعَ أَمَّنْ لَا يَهْدِي إِلَّا يُهْدَى From Quranic perspective, guide should not need the guidance of people. So we have this source of guidance. We can ask him for help. We can ask him for guidance. Or we can ask Allah to guide us through Imam and we receive this guidance, but we need to ask for guidance and we need to apply it. This is there. But if you want Imam to be more active 
if you want imam to play more direct and more obvious role in our life in the time of qayba this is only possible if it is the time of being desperate if it is the time of estrar you know sometimes there are some exits that you are not supposed to use only when there is emergency is emergency exit god forbid if there is a fire then you can use that fire exit to go out for imam zaman there is emergency entrance to this world to this public life that we have he is there he's living with us but for him to come in the middle of our problems to rescue us to help us in the time of ghayba in my humble opinion opinion it's only possible through emergency entrance and that is when either the situation becomes so obviously miserable and difficult that everyone says that we are not able to do anything even honest people hard-working people they say we cannot do anything or the situation maybe is not that desperate but mu'minin who are full of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and full of love for imam and full of humility they think they cannot do anything unless imam helps them so maybe you can reach the point of feeling desperate much earlier than another person and therefore you get help this of course has to be real any person who feels mustar honestly not just formally not just verbally not just because you are lazy any hard working any determined person who out of his awareness or her awareness of the size and the extent of the problems in the world reaches the edge of desperation and says that I am not able to deal with this a mom would come and help him and if leaders of communities are in this situation imam then would lead the community so this is another way that we can benefit from imam mahdi sharif in addition to the first two types of benefits his role as a means as a channel of mercy of allah second his role for providing guidance but you have to apply the guidance in addition to those two third is that we can benefit from his direct intervention when we are in a desperate situation you have heard many stories of people that were stuck in a desert for example they had i don't know disease they really reached the point of being desperate and they received help from imam mahdi directly or through his helpers or his aides this is very common in the history of Qayba. we have many reliable stories this is because of that general principle of estrar but i want to learn that we can bring that to more wider uh, scenarios of our community life if we are deeply connected to imam and we are humble at the same time hard working organized very serious but we understand that we need our imam to be with us you know sometimes people who learn a little knowledge they become arrogant and they think they are themselves an alim 
they can replace their teachers. But sometimes people who have studied with an alim for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, they have their own students, they have their own publications. They are more appreciative of their teachers. In history of the Hosea, for example, we have Mujtahideen who attend lectures of their teachers for tens of years. And more than a new talabe, they appreciate being in touch with their teacher and on a daily basis benefiting. And if he has, you know, uh, other meetings, other discussions throughout the day, private or not private, they would attend. Because the one who really knows benefit and value of knowledge is more thirsty. Those who are successful in tablighs, for example, and have good understanding of the situation in the world, and have good skills, good talents, they are hardworking and determined, they are supposed to be more understanding their need for someone like Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala Fadihu Sharif. An unexperienced person thinks that he can manage everything. But someone who is wise and pious and humble and hardworking understands the, that this responsibility is too heavy and we need Imam Mahdi to help us. So if you understand your need and your situation in your honest evaluation has to reach the level of estrar, then you can invite Imam Mahdi to your life. If you are responsible for a family, you can invite him to the family. It's very important that any person can invite Imam as much as he has authority. Every person can bring Imam to his own personal life. People who are responsible for a family, they can bring Imam to the family. Those who are responsible to community, they can invite Imam to the community. This is why leaders have great roles. If leaders are on the right track, many people can benefit from them. If they are trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like community trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they make dua, it's like whole community making dua. Of course, if the community helps them, it's much better. But even if community is not very much you know, alert, they believe in the leader, but leader is very alert. It can, he can bring good to all members of community. Okay, this was one point that I wanted to mention about how we can involve Imam Mahdi Sharif in our family, community, personal life, and how much to expect from him, how much his hands are open. Another thing which I want to mention tonight is that maybe it's not an exaggeration. I am saying this with careful uh, thinking. I'm not saying it's, I'm right, but I think this is not exaggeration. I think this is very correct. I think I can bring some evidence that no hujja of Allah so far his life has been so much connected to dua all the prophets and messengers were making dua and some people made dua for them all the imams made dua munajat and people made dua for them but i think among all prophets and messengers and awliyaullah, the one whose life is connected with dua, is surrounded with dua, is filled with dua, is shaped by dua, is Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. No Imam has lived so long so that he can pray this long. 
امام مهدی is so far alive for more than 1100 years almost 1200 years and because of also his life in the Qayba many of the things many of his hours are spent in relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through salat and dua and recitation he's praying a lot and you can also understand how much impact this long process of ibadah and prayer and contemplation has on imam how much this would add to the activeness of his light all Ahl al-Bayt have light but depending on how much they have lived in dunya and what situations they have gone through that light which is a spread in dunya can be different Imam Mahdi is very very spiritual very much full of light to the extent that our Imams were very much looking forward to see him of course they, it was not possible to see him in dunya but they had shawq even amirul mu'minin has shawq as he says clearly to meet imam zaman imam sadiq has yearning to see imam reza salam we have this hadith even imam sadiq alayhi salam says lo adraktuhu la khadamtuhu ayyam hayati if i was able to witness him to be in his time i would have served him so Imam Zaman has prayed a lot for general things, for particular things, for the Shia who need help, for humanity which needs help. Imam is constantly praying. In addition to the angels who constantly pray in different ways through tasbih, through ham, through istighfar, we have also Imam Zaman who is praying. Also, no Hujja of Allah has so much received prayer of Mu'mineen. Now for almost 1200 years, Mu'mineen are praying for Imam Mahdi. But in reality, this started even before even Imam Sadiq has taught how to pray for Imam Zaman. Even generations before they started praying for Imam Zaman. In a lecture uh, given two years ago in the Hosea of England, I talked about significance of praying for Imam Mahdi. We should not think because his life is guaranteed, he doesn't need prayer. He has to be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has a mission in the end of the time. So he's not going to die. He's not going to be killed. So we, need, we don't need to do dua. No, this is absolutely wrong. He needs more than anyone else our duas. Because of the difficulties that he goes through and because of the risks and dangers which are there for him, we need to pray for him. For his protection, for his comfort, for the ease of his affairs, for his community also we have to pray, for the enemies of Imam to be corrected or at least to be stopped. We have to make lots of dua in the time of Qayba for Imam Zaman and actually our dua in this time is a kind of experience of Faraj. أكثر الدعاء بتعجيل الفرج فإن ذلك فرجكم. By praying for فرج, you can not only, insha Allah, bring فرج of Imam Zaman universal فرج earlier, you can also bring فرج to your own life. It's beautiful that فرج is not just universal. فرج is universal and local. And if you pray for that universal Faraj, 
as much as it that can be locally or right now given would be given. So always pray for Faraj, always pray for the protection, for the health of Imam Zaman, for success of Imam Zaman, for his affairs to be easy, for his helpers, for his Shia, for his community. So my understanding is that no hujj of Allah has this connection with dua either by him or for him like Imam Mahdi Sharif. And this actually makes quite uh, great sense because as we know, dua is mukhul ibadah. So the one who is at a very high level of servitude and the one who has been given for wise reason the chance of having extended period of servitude in dunya he must manifest more the core of this servitude which is dua okay now the third point i want to say is a quick reference to some duas for Imam Mahdi al Sharif. Of course, there are many. I only mention uh, just some of them. And there are many that you are already familiar. Even some of these maybe you are already familiar. But just as a way of educating ourselves more. The late Allah Majlisi Rahmatullah Alay in Biharul Anwar, volume 92, page 326. He has a chapter, Bab. Bab ma yanbaqi an yud'a bihi fi zaman al This chapter is about those things which are good to be prayed in the time of Qayba means du'as which are recommended for the time of Qayba Aqulu Allah in Majlis he says Qad awradna akthara ad'iyat hadha al-ma'na fi kitab al-Ghaybah He says most of these du'as for the time of Qayba we have mentioned in the book of Qayba Allah Malisi uh, in Bihar al Anwar around volume 52 onwards, he has discussion about Imam Mahdi and Ghayba, detailed discussion. So, over there also, he has mentioned these du'as, but for another purpose, he makes also those du'as here. The first du'a is what Shaykh Saduq Rahmatullah has mentioned in Ikmaluddin. Ikmaluddin is the book by Shaykh Saduq which is actually about Imam Mahdi and Ghaybah. Abdullah ibn Sanan قال, قال Abu Abdullah alayhi salam He says Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said Satusibukum shubhatun fatabqawna bila alamin yura wala imamin hudan. There would be a time of shubha, a time of uh, lack of clarity, a time of people doubting, and you would be without a flag to be seen, without imam of guidance being among you visibly la yanju minha illa man da'a bi du'a al gharik no one would be saved in that condition except those who make du'a of gharik gharik is the one who is droning in the sea you know when you are droning in the sea you are very desperate nothing to hold not no one to help you and in few minutes you may die how desperate you are so the person who is abdullah ibn sanan says i told imam sadiq alayhi salam wa kayfa dua al gharik how is dua of gharik 
Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, you say this, taqulu. Now this is a dua that we make many times, of course, with some additions. You say, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Because also you are uh, to consider that it's for tariq, so it has to be short. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, O Transformers of the Hearts, Thabbit qalbi ala dinik. This is one of the important du'as in the time of Ghaybah that we ask Allah to make our heart firm with our faith. We don't want to deviate, we don't want to go astray, we don't want to start doubting. Thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Strengthen, make firm uh, my heart over your religions. Means make it firm uh, with Iman. Narrator says, I told Imam, what if we say like this, Ya muqallib al-qulub wal-absar thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Oh, the transformer of the hearts and the eyes. Please keep our hearts firm on your religion. Then Imam alayhi salam gave him a lesson which is good for here, but also for other cases, that these du'as are ma'athur, are transmitted to us, and we should try to recite them literally as we receive them. Don't bring your innovations to these du'as. You can make du'a as you like, but if a du'a is specifically recommended, don't add anything to this. فَقَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَالَ مُقَلِّبُ الْقُلُوبِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Yes, it is true that Allah is the transformer of the hearts and the eyes. Some of the du'as actually we say يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ يَا مُدَبِّرَ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّارِ We have for Nuruz. So it's okay. But وَلَكِنْ قُلْ كَمَا أَقُولْ But say as I say. يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ Thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Don't add anything to this. Okay. This is the first dua here. The second dua, again, Allah Majlisi quotes from Ikmaluddin by Shaykh al Saduq. And the narrator is Zurara. And Zurara and Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. في حديث ذكر فيه غيبة القائم عليه السلام. So Zurara quotes a hadith from Imam Sadiq in which the issue of غيبة and occultation of Imam Mahdi is addressed, is mentioned. قال زرارة فقلت جعلت فداك. He says, I told Imam Sadiq, may I be your ransom? فَإِنْ أَدْرَكْتُ ذَلِكَ الزَّمَانِ Look, Imam Mahdi has not yet been born. It's the time of Imam Sadiq. But they had so much of understanding that they were conscious about Imam Mahdi and for their own sake and also for the sake of people who come later, they ask very practical questions. Zurara says, if I leave, maybe I leave. he didn't know that He's going to die before that. He says, if I leave and witness that time, what should I do? In adrak to zalika zaman, fa'ayyashayyan a'mal. What should I do if I am able to leave in the time of qayba? Qala ya zurara. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, O zurara, in adrak to zalika zaman, فَلْزَمْ هَذَا الدُّعَا If you witness that time, فَلْزَمْ هَذَا الدُّعَا means try to make this dua continuously. Means not once or twice. 
mulazama means you have to be uh, continuously quite often making this dua allahumma arrifni nafsak fa innaka illam tu'arrifni nafsak lam a'rif nabiyyak the dua that you are all familiar oh allah make yourself known to me if you don't make yourself known to me lam a'rif nabiyyak i cannot know also your prophet it is with your help with your guidance with your miracles and signs that i believe in your prophet allahumma arrifni rasulak fa innaka in lam tu'arrifni rasulak lam a'rif hujjatak oh allah please make your messenger known to me because if you don't show your messenger to me i would not then know your hujja imam mahdi because it is through the prophet that we came to know about imam ali and other imams and now imam mahdi who introduced them to us the decision was made by allah but the one who declared it ya ayyuhar rasul ballig ma unzila the one who delivered the message of allah who announced the choice of allah was rasulullah so we ask allah to show rasulullah also to us so that we can know the hujja so first we ask allah to show himself to us so that we can know the prophet we ask allah to give us ma'rifah of the prophet so that we can know the hujja allahumma arrifni hujjatak oh allah please make your hujja known to me fa innaka illam tu'arrifni hujjatak dhalaltu an dini if you don't make your hujja known to me i will be misguided in my faith because sunni shia have narrated this hadith of mutawatir that man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamane mata mitatal jahiliya so we ask allah to know help us know him better we ask allah to help us know rasulullah better we ask allah to help us know imam zaman better this is also one of the duas that we frequently should make in the time of qaiba i mention only these two there are many more duas here and we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless imam mahdi ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif will all kinds of support that he has throughout the history he has supported his prophets and messengers and awliya in different ways with the angels with the holy spirit with his inspirations with good helpers we ask allah to give all the helps and all types of assistance that he has to imam mahdi ajjalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif allahumma kull waliyyaka al hujjat ibn al hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaihi fi hadhihi as sa'ah wa fi kull sa'ah not only the time that i am praying in all different times in future even maybe i'm not there but i want to initiate this dua that o oh allah be waliyyan be his guardian hafizan be his protector wa qaidan you lead him to the right directions wa nasiran help him wa dalilan be his guide wa aina be his eye so that he can see everything in the perfect way so we ask allah to give all different types of support that he has to imam mahdi jalalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif and to protect him and we humbly ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to act to plan to live in the way that would bring joy to the heart of imam mahdi jalalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif and not na'uzu billah to bring concern or dissatisfaction to the heart of Imam Mahdi Jalalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif may Allah inshallah protect 
all the lovers of Imam, all the helpers of Imam, all the institutions that sincerely work for Imam, give them more tawfiq, more support, more guidance, better resources, so that inshallah they can live by the standards that Imam alayhi salam expects. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alam.